Good evening, everyone. I am thrilled to be here to help you celebrate this year's recipients of the James Beard Award. Let's take a look at a little video about Chef Yan's accomplishments. I'm the corner ambassador. Food is the bridge for all of us, and I want to use food and cooking to bring people closer to them. I was born in Guangzhou, China. It was the most turbulent time in modern Chinese history. It's a famine, drought, flood, and a lot of problems. As a kid, we went to bed hungry. So we learned not to waste anything. Whatever you have, you have to create something. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, say guy. Oh, say guy. I actually went to culinary school. And then when I graduated, my first stop is in Edmonton. Alberta, Canada. It just happened that year, it was the coldest in 40 years. I came down to visit a friend, went to UC Davis, never returned to Canada. This is too cold. I actually started teaching cooking class when I was at UC Davis. This is how I begin to figure out, hey, this is kind of fun that I make good money and I make everybody happy. One day, somebody frantically called and said, I'm the producer, can you come over to the studio tomorrow to do a cooking demonstration? And I said, are you sure? Because I've never faced a camera before. I don't know how to do television. The general manager actually watched it and said, ask this guy, this guy is crazy, I'm going to come back. They asked me, hey, check in, how would you like to host your own show? That was 43 years ago. I feel like I met Martin when I was three years old, because he was always in my living room. I remember watching as a kid and thinking, okay, here's a guy who looks like he could be my uncle, he could be my dad. He's doing something that he loves and that comes from the heart. And I thought to myself, I would love to model that after my own life one day. So even as a young kid, I remember, if Yan can do it, I can do it too. And it's not just with his cooking. Producing Martin shows was fascinating for me because he has this exuberance. And he also has this depth of knowledge. Not everyone can ad-lib as easily as he can. Not everyone can explain things without stopping to think about them. I'm tired. This hard work. Everything looks easy in life, but when you actually get involved, it is sweat and blood and hard work. I admire these people. I think the most impressive characteristic of Martin is how hard he works. Not just doing the television production, but how hard he works all the time for everything he's interested in. I have published about close to 35 cookbooks, and I'm working on one more. All together, at one point, I have 12 restaurants. I've done probably about a total of 32 series. And for my next show with Martin Yen, Bye-bye. The reason why I do the show with the travel vlog is I want people to understand where I came from and where I'm going. It has been the most challenging, fulfilling, and comforting journey. A life journey as well as a culinary journey. When you have something as simple as a common denominator of food, and you understand how it's put together, and then you appreciate it by eating it, you are essentially welcoming someone who's different, a culture that's different, into your everyday. And I think that's exceptionally powerful. It's not just the food. It's what he's done for people. It's what he's done for his community. It's the support he's given to other chefs and other people. For all these reasons, his lifetime and his body of work really merit the award he's getting. People from around the world come over to the U.S. to look for the American dream. And this is one of the American dream that we have fulfilled. I turn it down, you're turn it down, everybody's turn it down! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you so much. Thank you. I was very fortunate to start with the iconic, legendary Julia Child, French chef, and Galloping Gourmet. Those days on PBS, so we have our three cooking shows. We host the Daily Yankee Cook Show. Before I start talking about some of my experience, I want to thank the James B. Foundation. I want to thank the Yankee Cook team, my wife, Susan, and Stephanie, and everybody else, and the Yankee Cook team. And also, all the chefs that I have worked with in this country, as well as around the world. You know, when I was very a teenager, when I first set foot in Hong Kong restaurant's kitchen. In those days, the culinary career was basically the furthest thing from my mind. Surviving day to day is actually my main concern. Days become months. Months turn into years. And in the brink of my eye, here I am standing in front of all of you, talking about a lifetime. How amazing. As many of my good, as many of my good friends, colleagues, and contemporary have retired, many ask me, Martin, when are you going to retire? I love my work. My work gives me pressure and satisfaction. Like Oprah Winfrey when said, if you love your work, you don't have to work a day of your life. My good friend, Japa Pen, well into his 80s, it is keeping busy every day. I just had the great pressure to work with Alice Water and Japa Pen just a few days ago. We share a lot of the wonderful memories and also how we see food will be come in the future. He told me recently, he intended to work until he's 108 years old. That's Jack's words. So don't ask me when I will retire. The James Bay Foundation is unique in that it recognizes not only the excellency in culinary arts, but also its connection and contribution to our community to this great country, U.S. of A. Over the decades, I've come to know so many of you. I'm honored to call you not only my colleague, but also my friends. I have made thousands of wonderful friends in this country and around the world. I remember when I first set foot in the U.S., there were probably about a few thousand Chinese and Asian restaurants. But in recent years, it has grown to well over 50,000. So, so you may notice many of these restaurants have my picture somewhere in the wall. That means a lot of free meals. So mention my name when you go to visit any restaurant with my picture. I have learned so much from them and also from many of you. Perhaps the most important lesson I have learned is that I am not only a chef with a public persona, but like my mentor, Julia Child, I have the opportunity to bring people together through my television work and personal appearances. And like Julia, I want to inspire others to share the joy of cooking. I have always believed that the more people learn about each other's history, heritage, culture, the more we expect and respect each other and appreciate each other. And food and cooking are universal. There's no national, international boundaries. It breaks down barriers. It brings people closer together, just like tonight. And I stand here, basking in the limelight. There are tens of thousands of 
culinary professionals around the world sweating in the busy kitchen, particularly from where I came from. Asian chefs work long hours for modest pay, and typically a challenging, in a very challenging kitchen environment, 95 degree, 95 percent humidity. Few of them ever get a real vacation or even take an extra day off. So from the bottom of my heart, the hardworking, all the world with the chef professionals around the world, who devote their entire life to this particular profession, this one is for you. You know, they all deserve a Lifetime Achievement Award. And you know, it doesn't matter where I am and what occasion, I'm always well prepared. Because tonight, after this award ceremony, there will be a tasting event. You'll be seeing me passing the food around, dumping the garbage in the compost, and washing dishes. That's why I am ready. To work. I'm always ready to work because food and cooking is my love and also my passion. Just like many, many thousands and millions of chefs in the country and around the world. Once again, thank you, James B. Foundation. Thank you, all of you. You all receive the same award that I receive. You should all be given a Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you so very much, everybody.